Hello, welcome to the Daily Fantasy Flex Podcast, the NFL edition. I am your host, Brian Mears. I am joined, as always, by fellow Fantasy Labs guys, Matthew Friedman and Peter Jennings, a.k.a. CSU Ram 88. It is week 15, and our special guest this week is David Kitchen. Uh, you might know him as Soccer Dave around the industry. He's currently the creative director at Rotogrinders. Dave, how are you doing, man? Doing good. That corporate life title, creative director, I, I like it. Yeah, that's yeah, solid, solid. Uh, Pete, how you doing, man? How was week 14 for you? Uh, not my best week, but uh, ready to go to Miami to speculate on Bale, Levitan, and BA running the mile. And oh. uh, There's no cues this week, so hopefully I can hold on to whatever money I have left. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm so but- tilted I don't get to see that in person. Yeah, what are we doing, Peter? Are we, are we like uh, are we- aeroscoping it? Yeah, we actually have a professional crew coming out to film it. It'll be on my Periscope, and um, I'll announce it. Hopefully, we get a photo finish. I think Bales is basically dead, and about 10 NBA will be pushing hard. How many Bales live people almost, will be at this event? I don't know. Hopefully, just the four of us. We're hoping that there's <laughs> not people there. Oh, gosh. All right. That'll be interesting. All right. Um, Freeman, how are you doing, man? Solid, Great. you know, Star Wars comes out this week, so I uh, got that to look forward to. And otherwise, just uh, grinding down the clock, ready for this season to end. I hear you. All right, well, let's jump into week 15. Uh, we have an interesting week. We have two Saturday games. Uh, so Broncos Colts is on Thursday night. And then the Saturday games this week are Bears, Lions, and Chargers, Chiefs. Uh, Sunday night game, Cowboys Raiders not on either DraftKings or Fandom main slate this week. And then Monday night, Falcons at Buccaneers. So somewhat of an abbreviated slate with the Saturday games and uh, no Sunday on, on either main slate. So uh, we're going to stick primarily to uh, the Sunday main slate, of course. Uh, we'll probably venture out just a little bit with our prop bets. But let's dive right in, guys. Let's uh, start with our usual segment, as always real or fake i'm gonna go around ask these guys to give me a real trend um from either week 14 or just the whole year is fine as well um that will continue this season and one fake trend uh freeman i will start with you so something that i think is real tom brady struggling on the road in the second half of the season especially against teams who are familiar with him and the patriots and so this would apply most obviously to teams in the afc east Uh, But it also applies to other teams who the Patriots would play periodically, uh, and that's the Steelers this week. Uh, They've played the Patriots twice within the the last, like, year and two months. Uh, Played them in the playoffs, played them last year, I think, in week eight or week nine. Uh, So uh, this is something that we see commonly with quarterbacks struggling within division or opponents that they play against uh, on the road or in the second half of the season. Uh, But Brady used to – be fine with this trend he basically had uh, like an agnostic split with this trend but as he's gotten older more routinely uh, has he struggled against teams on the road in the second half of the season specifically again teams that he's had a lot of experience with or who I should say have had experience with him so this is a spot against the Steelers this week where I don't like I never feel comfortable predicting like a, a Brady like catastrophe or anything like that, but it's not a great spot for him. And especially uh, with Joe Hayden coming back for the Steelers, it could be a spot where he struggles. Something that I think is fake is uh, (laughs) the Broncos defense looking as good as it was last week. Not that I think they are bad. I I just don't think that they are um, good enough to shut out even the Jets. Uh, so I will be curious to see, I, like, I'm not going to watch Thursday night football this week. I'm going to see star Wars, but I will be curious to see how the, uh, the Raiders, not the Raiders, uh, the Broncos actually do against the Colts this week on Thursday night football Colts at home on that fast track. I could see it being a nice spot for them to bounce back. Nice. So you have opening night tickets. Yes, of course. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Dave, what are some trends that are sticking out to you? Uh, so I definitely think that the, the one that is real is just how amazing Russell Wilson is. Like even last week with some bad throws, the fact that they were taking shots deep uh, and the fact that he still got there after kind of a, a rough game, just from a raw fantasy points 
uh, projection. Like he just, it's, we haven't seen this in a while. Like we haven't seen this since like Cam Newton, maybe three years ago, uh, where you've got someone who is just so dangerous. There's no running game at all right there at, right now in Seattle. So it's, uh, it's really tough to not play Russ. And I saw that the line uh, already has moved two points in favor of Seattle this week. So that's going to be the real thing. The The fake thing is going to be like, um, how do I say this? Veteran players who don't work out in other places or who are locker room problems going to the Patriots and smashing. That is a good, not going to be the case with Kenny Brett. I do not see this working out with Kenny Brett. He, that guy is just one big pile of mush and uh, just he's not going to be like Randy Moss 2.0. Don't get me started on Kenny Brett. I've, I've got really bad feelings towards him. All right. We're not going to get you started on Kenny Britt. Uh, Thank Pete, you, Brian. Pete, what are some trades that are sticking out to you? All right. Well, response to two things Friedman said, which will kind of cover for me. Uh, the Broncos defense, I mean, come on. <laughs> I'm not going to say that it's, uh, you know, real or fake, but I think that, um, you know, it's been a very polarizing year for them. And uh, at home, I think they can still play well in the right matchup. So take them in the right spots. You'll be fine. Obviously, it's been a bad season for the Broncos. but uh, yeah, Are they well, playing backup Jets quarterbacks anytime soon? They are playing the Colts, though, but they're playing on the road. Uh, you just got to target the Broncos at home and good matchups. That's, I think that's a real trend you can, you can take advantage of down the home stretch here. Uh, I haven't actually looked at their schedule, so I'm not sure if that comes to fruition again. But uh, net, for next year, I do think that they'll be a really viable defense, uh, again, like they were the last couple of years. This year has just been atrocious with the offense play. But um, one thing that I think is uh, very awesome and unrelated to football at all that uh, – Friedman and I share is the nerdiness for Harry Potter and Star Wars. And that trend is very, very real. That is something that is going to stay true. Friedman, we're going to be nerding out on that stuff when we're 60 years old, right? Oh, definitely. So that, that, trend, that trend is real. I just uh, want to say that I made, a, I made a joke about Fitz Magic being a Fitz Muggle and only Friedman caught it. So I'm, I'm questioning your nerdiness about Harry Potter. If you want to, if you want to do a quiz offline... I'm, right. I'm, not saying, I'm not saying that I'm Friedman, but uh, I went to Harry Potter parties uh, to get the book uh, at midnight. I also ordered like the second and third copy from England, which came out a lot earlier than the American versions. Okay. Uh, right. that was my, 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 my parents were involved with that and my sister as well, but pretty big Harry Potter nerd. Um, yeah. Uh, hey, in terms of... Go the, ahead. the real question is, what is your wand made out of? uh <laughs> that's personal <gosh>. right <laughs> that's personal <laughs> hey fun fact i've never seen a harry potter movie ever have you have you read it in the books I'm trying to think of like it's my outside and say it's like come <laughs> on <laughs> no, <laughs> dumb question <laughs> what are books get out of here uh uh please if, if you're... The unicorn hair to friedman i'm not sure if i could reference like a wood like that would be part of it um what, what's your wand made out of buddy mahogany Mahogany. Yeah. Freeman, you have a wand from like Orlando, right? Like like dragon hair and stuff like that. There's other, it's not just straight wood, but. Well, yeah, mahogany is the wood. The core is, would be, it could be like a phoenix feather. It could be like dragon heartstring. It could be like anything, but yeah, we're going far afield. But yes, I do have a wand that I bought Eden as part of the, um, the British uh, language prop. Uh, talking like a Brit. That's so, right, yeah, right. that was that was what I did to sort of mitigate the disaster of that 10 minutes. Oh, my gosh. All right, yeah, we're really getting off, off trail here. Okay. All right, let me, let me go back to something that, that uh, is fake. Uh, and obviously, injury related, but, you know, Kamara, people are talking about, obviously, with, uh, you know, the bad game, obviously got hurt. He was crushing before the concussion. Uh, if he does play this week, I think we'll, we'll see him back to his, his form. And I know a lot of people are saying, oh, he only is going to get 15, 16 touches. I think it's very real, his fantasy production over the last couple months when he's been healthy and in a spot against the Jets where they're huge favorites. I think Ingram and Kamara could both be top five running backs this week, and I would bet on Kamara over Ingram. So I think that that's a trend. It's not fake. Obviously, he got hurt, but that's a trend that you can capitalize on with people having 
recency bias and probably going away from him after the concussion in the event that he does play it. The Broncos defense thing, I'll, I'll stand by that. I think it's uh, more of a real trend than a fake trend uh, that Freeman brought up. Yeah, you got a Sam Brand. Um, I will say as well that uh, if you're listening to this podcast and not watching the YouTube video, uh, you need to go check it out uh, just for Dave's face when I asked him if he's read the Harry Potter books. It was just utter disgust. Like what? I, 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 it was at that moment that I wondered what I had committed to yeah, on this, that's on fair. this podcast. That's fair. Um, all right, Dave, I'm going to kick to you first on this next segment, uh, which is the chalk segment. Uh, we record these on Tuesday nights, so uh, of course things can change, injuries and stuff. Uh, we don't even have, you know, final word on like Aaron Rodgers whether he's going to play. So we're speculating on some things, but um, for the main slate, uh, Dave, as of Tuesday night, who are some guys that are standing out to you, uh, whether it's because of their salaries, matchups, whatever, that could be chalky? I mean, I think two guys that you have to look at, maybe even maybe even three that we had not even considered at the beginning of the season, are the running backs that the backup running backs are now like in smash spots with, um, you know, in that five to six K range. So Kenyon Drake coming off a 27 point performance against new England, uh, 5,800 will be nice. Even at Buffalo be fine. And then Alex Collins, only five K at Cleveland. Uh, yeah, he's going to be owned. He's going to be pretty chalky. And with like, with, with adequate reasons, right? I mean, maybe Baltimore, maybe they are opening up the offense a little bit. Maybe Alex Collins is what makes it tick, but he's going to get fed the ball a lot, and he has a lot of touchdown equity there in Cleveland, regardless of Buck Allen sniping any touchdowns. Yeah, definitely fair. Uh, Freeman, what are your thoughts on, um, on those running backs? I like those. Uh, I also think Mike Davis uh, as a guy who's even a little bit cheaper uh, as a home favor going against the Rams who have allowed top three fantasy marks to opposing backfields. Uh, I think he's interesting there. Um, Hasn't had massive production, but has been the best running back in that Seattle backfield in a while. Uh, Again, not that that's saying much, but uh, I I think he is interesting there as a home favorite. Uh, At quarterback, Cam Newton, Um, I don't know how chalky he's going to be, but he's interesting to me. The line has really moved in the direction of the Panthers, and some of that is probably some speculation as to whether Rodgers will or won't play. Um, But at home against the Green Bay secondary that has just been horrible this year, he's interesting. Uh, Correlated with that, Devin Funches is also someone who's interesting. I don't know how chalky he's going to be, but again, going against that Green Bay secondary. And he has seen a pretty big bump in production ever since the Kelvin trade. Uh, Michael Thomas is someone who's interesting. Finally getting some of those targets near the end zone. Uh, He's had touchdowns recently backed by the fact that he is getting those high equity targets. Uh, And he's always getting targets across the field in general. And then now at home, the Saints are big favorites. They have the highest implied total on the slate. So a really nice spot for him. And then at tight end, uh, Ertz is someone who you know, we have to wait and see if he's actually cleared through the concussion protocol. You know, there was some back and forth last week, but this week he is substantially cheaper than Gronk, uh, but he has a great spot going against the Giants, even with Nick Foles at quarterback. Uh, so he's someone I'm interested in. Of course, we just have to see if he actually clears the concussion protocol, but I imagine he will. Freeman, what are your thoughts on some of the chalk? It's, it's interesting, you know, they, these guys have talked about these, um, like, mid-price running backs. It seems like it's sort of the week of the mid-price running backs. You know, those guys that they mentioned, and we even have, like, guys like uh, per, uh, P. Ryan and Latavius Murray as, like, pretty decent home favorites that are in that same range. Uh, so what are your thoughts on the running back situation and some other guys that are standing out as the chalk? Yeah, um, the, the guys that uh, Kitchen mentioned there, uh, I, I'm down with both of those guys. Uh, Curran Williams, I don't think he's going to be that chalky, but maybe. But, I mean, I think it, it, a lot of it just depends on whether we see Adrian Peterson active or not, obviously. But there are a lot of mid-range running backs. And I think it's just that time of the year where, uh, you know, like uh, starting running backs are getting injured and you have backups who are getting some opportunity. And, uh, but Alex Collins is definitely interesting. Mm-hmm. They're going against, uh, going against the Browns who are just abysmal. So uh, he's interesting, but yeah, there's definitely a lot of value in that middle range. Yeah. Pete, hop in here. What are some uh, chalk guys that are standing out to you earlier in the week? 
Like I said, I mean, I, I think Kenyon Drake will end up being the chalkiest of all these running backs. I think, uh, you know, assuming Damian Williams is out, Drake will be by far the most heavily owned running back. I believe he's 5,800. You know, he's been playing amazing going against this Bills team. That since they've got rid of Marcel Darius, has really been a sieve against the run. Frank Gore, obviously, in the snow. Uh, you know, I think he had 400 carries. So, um, yeah, they're, they're, they're struggling. They knew the run was coming. They couldn't stop Frank Gore. Uh, I think that Drake will be the chalk, especially after everyone saw him play well on Monday Night Football versus the Patriots. Russell Wilson, I mean – there's a guy that, you know, we just talked about. I know he has a bad history versus the Rams. I'm curious your, your guys' opinions on him. There's also a trend here at Fantasy Labs. Quarterbacks in the second game within the division normally play poorly, but Russell Wilson, you know, the last couple months is accounting for more offense than any quarterback ever has. And, uh, you know, the, the total's already moved up uh, for the Seahawks up to 25. They're now a favorite, and he's just been dominating. He's going to be the MVP, especially after the Wentz injury and – I expect him to be pretty shocked, and I think he's a great option. And then you have the killer beats. Uh, right now, there's not a ton of value on the slate, but I still expect Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell to be pretty chalky. And uh, fortunately, we finally have them on the main slate. So, yeah, it's a tough week in terms of trying to find the value, but those are some guys that I definitely am really interested here on Tuesday night. Yeah, finally get the, uh, the Steelers back on the main slate. I think it's been, what, like yeah. five weeks or so? Too long, man. Yeah. Too freaking long. Yeah, so it'll be nice to have Bell and, uh, and Brown and those guys. Um, all right, let's talk about some of the uh, chalky fades or leverage or pivot plays. Uh, Friedman, I'll start with you. Uh, you know, for fades, honestly, I'm horrible when it comes to projecting stuff like that. So I'm going to leave that a little bit more to, to Pete and to Kitchen, but I, I would talk about some of the pivot plays slash – guys who probably shouldn't be owned, but I would own them anyway. Uh, Marcus Mariota is someone who has been absolutely horrible this year. Ugh. Like just a, like a, a, like, I mean, act like a travesty, but he has a really nice matchup <laughs> against the 49ers, which I feel like is the ultimate trap, but he will have no ownership. And the 49ers, they like give it up to every, like TJ Yates looked like a starting quarterback last week against the 49ers. Their secondary has just been absolutely decimated. They're missing both of their starting safeties. Their two veteran cornerbacks are two of the worst guys in the league in terms of PFF grades. And then they have, like, rookies uh, manning the other spots in the secondary. Like, it is bad back there. Uh, so if there ever is a spot for Mario to do it, I think it could be here. Uh, the big thing for me is the matchup and the lack of ownership. Um, I'm going to sound horrible saying Jordy Nelson, but this is like with Rodgers back, assuming Rodgers is back, I still think people will be interested in fading him just because he's been so horrible for the last two months and he just experienced a pretty big salary hike. Uh, so he would be someone I'd be interested in. But uh, one more guy, Cooper Cup, who's been good recently, but really hasn't had ownership. And no one really wants to roster a – uh, a road dog, especially in Seattle, but that Seattle defense is substantially hobbled. Uh, no, let's see here. Uh, no Sherman, no Cam Chancellor, uh, no Bobby Wagner, no KJ Wright. We have to get confirmation on those guys, but they exited last week early. Uh, hamstring and concussion issues. They're not certain to play this week, so we just kind of need to wait and see on them. But a substantially injured uh, Seattle defense. And Cup, even with um, Robert Woods coming back, he's still a guy who could get a lot of action out of the slot. He leads the team in targets, receptions, receiving yards. So he's someone who's intriguing to me. Uh, even with all the opportunity he's had recently, his ownership has still been fairly low. So uh, I think there could be even more opportunity there uh, in terms of just leverage. Kitchen, I'll kick to you next. What are your thoughts on some chalky phase and leverage or pivot plays? And then I uh, also got to get your, uh, your thoughts on Mariota call because you, uh, you gave an explanation. Oh, yeah. yeah, let me start with that because, you know, I'm, I'm based in Nashville. I'm, I, I try to keep my Titans uh, homerism – not as bad as Pete's Broncos homerism. So the thing with Mariota is it's not like you say, like if there's any spot, well, he's had plenty of spots this season. You look at what he did against the Colts 
the Texans, the Browns, when they just had field goals. Like, he has had multiple spots where he could have he could have been okay. Part of the problem is, and now people are kind of catching up on this, Terry Robisky, the offensive coordinator, and Mike Malarkey, have just done a huge disservice to what he can do on the field. Uh, you saw people like Rich Eisen tweeting it out. I thought, like, wow, if Rich Eisen's tweeting it out. But they're just wasting his talents, what he is able to do with this vanilla-style offense, and it is terrible. And when you are in multiple spots, they are the worst 8-5 and five team in the league. Um, and just their offense has been non-existent. They still try to keep running the ball when they don't need to. So that's all, that's all I'll say about that. Speaking of Mariota and the guy that he faced last week, I'm seeing Gabbert high in the projection models on multiple sites. Labs, RG. If people continue to play him because of his projection, his points per dollar projection, uh, that's going to be that's going to be a chalky fade for me. I'm not even sure what his ownership is going to be, but they're just going to see that 4.8 price tag. Like, what has Blaine Gabbert ever shown us to see like that he's good? I get it that he's on a, uh, you know, that his price tag is low. He's going against a Washington defense, but as on the road, I'm not down with Blaine Gabbert at all as uh, as a chalky play at quarterback to spend up. Yeah, I, I think that's that's very fair. What, Pete, what, what are your it, thoughts? What does it say? Here, here's an interesting one for you guys. What does it say when a three and ten team is favored versus an eight and five team? You talking about the the Niners? They're favored right now as we speak. Yeah. About two points. That Jimmy is yeah. pretty good. Eight and five team. And it's, I don't even like the I don't even like the Niners in this spot because Tennessee their style of play has been so gross. They just it's like the defense hasn't been bad except for that one game against the Steelers. But their offense it's just it's a slow style of play for fantasy purposes. I don't like it, and I don't blame Vegas for favoriting the Niners at all. What what I would say is it, it uh, probably indicates a couple of things. One that the uh, the team with more losses is at home, which is the case. Two that there's been some sort of change at the quarterback position, which makes the team substantially different, and that's also the case. But as a company man, I would say that uh, there was a uh, an article on I believe it's Bet Labs or Sports Insights where they actually look at this type of dynamic. And the team that um, is giving the points but uh, has the worst record in this type of situation, when you, a, when you see a disparity that large in record, uh, the team that is favored wins uh, or covers, I should say, an inordinate amount of the time. Um, so that is something that is, uh, that is interesting, that if Vegas is taking that big of a stand uh, mm-hmm. against the record, it normally means something. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, Pete, do you want to get in on your uh, chalky fates or pivot plays? <laughs> I mean, it's so tough. I mean, you know, I talked about Russ as the chalk. You know, if you want to buy the narrative, uh, or not even the narrative, but just the, the data that you have on him versus the Rams, maybe that's something that you could fade. feels pretty, pretty thin to me, uh, given that he's at home here and how good he's been uh, this year. I thought he was a, a good fade last week against Jacksonville and was looking – Look, you're feeling good about that after the first half, and then he was unbelievable in garbage time. So uh, I'm probably not going to be doing that. Um, you know, if you want to fade some of these running backs, uh, I don't hate the Alex Collins fade. I mean, I know he looked really, really good, but the Browns this year have been a lot better against the run than they have versus the pass. So it could be a wacko for Flacco week if you wanted to fade Collins and, you know, play one of the receivers there. Wouldn't hate that, but – uh, you know, Macklin's been a kind of a bust all year. and Mike Wallace has been, you know, discouraging to own most of the weeks this year as well. So that's a tricky spot. Um, you know, outside of that, it's really tough. I mean, this Patriots-Steelers uh, game should be awesome. Tons of fantasy goodness, uh, really high total, but everyone's so expensive in this game. So yeah. I wouldn't hate the idea of fading some of the expensive guys with a lack of value, but – that could really come back to bite you, especially with the killer bees and all the Patriots guys uh, and their implied total of 28. So it's a struggle. I mean, right now it's hard to identify some chalk that I I feel comfortable fading. All right, let's keep on moving. Let's go to the section on uh, conventional stacks. Uh, Friedman, I'll kick back to you. We'll just keep on going around the board. Who are some of the conventional stacks that you're considering for week 15? 
Well, one thing that's interesting, and I guess it makes sense, but we haven't really talked about uh, Roethlisberger as someone who would be really chalky. Um, and I get it given the matchup. Um, but still, even if you um, even if you take into account what they have done recently, the Patriots haven't been all that great uh, against quarterbacks uh, or like decent quarterbacks. They've still allowed a, a pretty good amount of production to opposing passers. And right now you have Roethlisberger at home um, where he's the best home quarterback, you know, like maybe like in the history of the league uh, with one of the best wide receivers, uh, you know, a guy who is, I think, a legitimate MVP candidate, although he won't win the MVP. Um, I'm interested in a Roethlisberger, Antonio Brown stack. And I don't know how, I mean, I think it's conventional, but I don't know how owned that will be um, because of the cost. But then also I think people will potentially be more on the Patriots than on the Steelers in this game in terms of stacking. So uh, that would be a stack that I'm interested in. Um, And then uh, let me see here. Oh yeah. Breeze at home to, uh, to Michael Thomas or Kamara. Um, I'm interested in both of those stacks. Dave, what are your thoughts on some conventional stacks for week 15? Uh, I mean, the Michael Thomas Drew Brees, I think, is the definitely the conventional stack that you would want to look at. Also, um, it was nice to see Doug Baldwin more involved with this offense last week. And uh, I think that could probably continue this upcoming week with Russ. Like, you don't have to play naked Russ. I think you could play Baldwin. Uh, depending on what his price tag is. And then, I mean, a, a team that has a pretty high implied team total and is a big favorite, the Vikings. So you get Case Keenum with either Thielen or Diggs uh, would, would be nice. The, the thing is, they, um, you know, Cincinnati's not terrible versus wide receivers, but they do give up um, – they are pretty bad against tight ends. So you might even could have like a Rudolph and Thielen stack uh, there. MP, I'll let you hop in here. Uh, curious your thoughts on like the popularity of like a Newton Funches stack as well. I love Funches this week. I mean, Funches mm-hmm. just went through two very tough matchups. Has had some tough matchups overall, and is still performing extremely well. I mean, going against Xavier Rhodes and having a, a solid game is very impressive to me. Um, you see where AJ Green is priced this week going up against Xavier Rhodes, and now he's in a dream matchup against the Packers. Uh, Cam Newton historically has been amazing at home. Um, I love him this week. I actually, I don't know. I mean, you're comparing all these guys versus Russ Wilson, who's just been so good. It's hard to say that you'd want to go away from him in cash, but I really like Cam Newton in tournaments. He's squarely on my radar. And uh, the other thing that's really interesting with Cam Newton, Greg Olson played the majority of snaps last week. He's only 4,000, I believe. And if he's reasonably healthy, that is just an all time steal for uh, Greg Olson. So I think Cam Newton is a, a great play. Uh, Naked Cam has worked out a lot in GBPs in the past. You know, a couple of years, it was all the, the Panthers onslaughts that really paid dividends. And this week, I don't even mind a double stack with Cam, Funches, and Greg Olson. All right, let's keep on moving here. Let's go to some advanced or contrarian stacks. Uh, Dave, I'll start with you on this one. Uh, so contrarian stacks, uh, I, I think you would have to look at – uh, like uh, cousins, you know, cousins hasn't been great, but look at cousins and uh, and Crowder in this matchup. Um, they are favored. Uh, I think that it will be interesting to see kind of how they match up, but I think that would be definitely a contrarian stack. And then also, you know, we talk <laughs> we talked about it, but someone for Baltimore with Flacco against this Cleveland defense. McCourty hasn't been that great the past three weeks. He's kind of shown that he is uh, he is a, a mere mortal. So uh, I, I like that as a conventional stack. Just anybody against like the the Browns or the Colts that that'll do it for me. That's the, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it'd be interesting to try to figure who that is. Maybe Macklin, I guess. Um, Friedman, one chop in there. Uh, one. Like a, a type of stack that I think is always interesting is the running back defense stack, especially if you have, as we do this week, a number of teams that are really big favorites 
uh, at home. You have the Vikings at home, Jags at home, uh, Saints at home as big favorites. Um, and then I think you could even look at uh, Eagles as big favorites on the road. Uh, pairing any of their running backs uh, with the defense, I think, could be good. And I, especially, like, I would go with the um, the Eagles because I think some people will be fading them because of the uh, the Wentz injury. But they have a nice matchup against the Giants, um, favored by seven and a half points. So that defense could uh, could have some opportunities to get some sacks, some interceptions, defensive touchdowns, and then. The Giants have allowed uh, top three fantasy points to opposing backfields, so a good spot for the runners uh, for the Eagles. So I could see that being something that is uh, fairly under-owned, especially given the, the Wentz injury. So I'll throw this one out to the group because I'm just curious uh, if anyone has a take. Um, you know, one defense that might be popular if you want to like a pair of running back in the defense is the Ravens against the Browns. Um, but you, we saw the Ravens really struggle last week. You know, they gave up 39 points to the Steelers. Uh, anyone have any thoughts on whether that's because of some of these injuries to Jimmy Smith and company or whether that was just the Steelers being the Steelers? I mean, if you look at the splits with Jimmy Smith out, they have not been nearly the same defense. And uh, freaking sucks. I mean, Jimmy Smith was on his way to the Pro Bowl. Obviously, I always have a lot of empathy for uh, a ruptured Achilles. Freaking worst injury. We saw Kayvon Webster suffer the same thing for the Rams. Um, just sucks. Um, I still think those Ravens defense is solid across the board, but it's not nearly the same without their best corner. Um, you know, the nice thing for them this week is they're facing the Browns, but – Browns have better weapons now. Coleman and uh, Josh Gordon are extremely good weapons. Duke Johnson, so Kaiser's obviously been inefficient and awful at times, but has shown some flashes, and now that he has the best weapons at home versus Baltimore, I mean, I don't hate it. Uh, There's defense I like, too, a lot more than Baltimore this week, but um, they're still in play, and, you know, I think – I don't know. I I like Josh Gordon and Corey Coleman, even though the Browns are in play right now for 16.25 points. Yeah, that's fair. Um, did I hit on everyone for contrarian stacks or did I miss somebody? We got it. Cool. All right, let's keep on moving then. Let's go to uh, bold calls. Um, Pete, I'll start with you. Bold calls. Uh, yep, it's, it's, uh, it's one, of those, one of those weeks where, you know, there's some clear chalk uh, and there's definitely some, some tougher spots. Um, I'll say in terms of a bold call, go to Tyrell Williams, uh, Tyrell the Gazelle, uh, friend of the podcast, Al Zeidenfeld, loves to throw up the dancing uh, gazelle or the the prancing gazelle when he uh, scores a long touchdown. Against this Chiefs team, they've been giving up big passing plays all year. I'll say he's a a good GPP play. I think Keenan Allen and Phillip Rivers obviously make a lot of sense as well if you're playing that Saturday slate. But I'll throw up Tyrell the Gazelle for another long touchdown as a uh, bold call. Awesome. Dave, what about you? What are some bold calls that you have for uh, week 15? Yeah, uh, I would look at Alshon Jeffrey kind of being a, uh, a great play. You just look at what he did last week. It falls, his yards per attempt were outrageous. Uh, I think that comes down just a little, but against this giant secondary, I think Alshon Jeffrey is in a great spot in the, the numbers might not indicate it, but uh, I really like him this week. I already mentioned Doug Baldwin as well. And uh, as far as the other bold calls, let me get on like some Jarek McKinnon GPP love uh, for a team that's favored by 11. You know, they might be able to do, it might not be Latavius Murray all day, every day. And uh, we know Jarek McKinnon is just uh, more than a human. He's, he's basically LaDainian, LaDainian Tomlinson. If you go to player profiler and get a look at his comp, that's his comp there. Give him a freaking hole and watch him go through there. So give me uh, Jarek McKinnon as like a, the ultimate GPP play. That spark uh, score. Yeah, for sure. Freeman, uh, what are some bold calls? So I think one game we haven't mentioned yet is uh, Bears at the Lions, and it makes sense. It's just kind of a nasty game and two – uninteresting teams in general but uh I mean the Bears aren't good but with Trubisky I think they've been a little undervalued in the spread market 
Uh, so the Lions are so inconsistent, but they often play down to the level of their competition. And uh, the line has started to move in the direction of the Bears. Uh, opened six and a half favorites, around five and a half. Uh, I'm picking the Bears to win outright by a touchdown uh, as they control the ball with the running game. And then in terms of a, uh, a bold DFS call, uh, this is correlated with, uh, with Kitchen's uh, Alshon call. I'm going with Nick Foles. Uh, I think for one week he plays like Carson Wentz uh, and uh, just absolutely destroys the Giants' defense. Uh, if you remove his one Jeff Fisher tainted season, he's actually had a pretty good career. And I think even if you adjust that down a little bit with uh, inflation from his one outlier season as a starter uh, in uh, in Philadelphia with Chip Kelly, I think he still has some pretty good numbers there. So. I think he might not be uh, as horrible as a backup as people uh, are anticipating. Yeah, it's hard to tell which is the outlier, the Jeff Fisher or the, the good starts. It's uh, up in the air right now. Um, so, yeah, that, that brings me to one more thing I did want to discuss before we hit our prop bets, which is to spend a, a minute or two talking about the Philly situation. Uh, obviously, Carson Wentz out for the year. Um, so Philly's interesting. It's not like they were like the most pass-heavy team in the league anyway. They ranked. Uh, 26 in the league as of right now, uh, passing on 54.3% of their plays. Pete, um, let's just sort of talk about this situation for a little bit. Like, do you expect the Eagles to be a similar sort of team in like their breakdown of run pass? Do you think maybe they'll uh, give a little more work to uh, the guy they acquired in the in the trade in Jay Ajayi, or what are you expecting from the Eagles moving forward? Well, shout out to Smiz again. We got two Smiz shout outs here in the pod. He referenced them as the ABCs. You got Ajahi, Blunt, and Clement uh, that have been splitting work. So it's been hard to target one of them in, uh, you know, DFS. But in terms of how the Eagles play, I mean, Foles has significant arm talent. The biggest difference between Foles and Wentz is Foles' mobility and ability to extend plays. So in that regard, I don't know what to anticipate, but he does have good arm talent. We saw him play extremely well uh, when he was under Chip Kelly. So I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, you you know, people would say, okay, let's ha- let's rely more on the run game. Let's play good defense, which the Eagles have been doing all year, even with a ton of injuries. But uh, I still think he's going to throw a decent bit. I like Dave bringing up Alshon Jeffrey. Hopefully Ertz will get back here sooner rather than later. Nelson Aguilar is really kind of coming to his own this year. So, Torrey Smith in the field as well. Uh, Foles has arm talent. The, the big thing is, can he, you know, extend plays at all? And, um, you know, obviously Wentz, I thought, was right there with Wilson for the MVP. It was a devastating injury. But uh, the Eagles still have a chance to be pretty good, I think. Uh, Dave, what, what are your thoughts on Ajayi specifically? You know, he's in that same sort of like mid-tier range. Obviously, probably not the same amount of equity as like Alex Collins and some of these guys that are going to be popular in cash games. Um, but I did write in our market share report this week that, uh, you know, Ajayi was losing snaps to, to Blunton um, Clement early uh, when he first got acquired by Philly. But uh, in week 14, he did get the most snaps. And then last week, uh, sort of like, convincingly the most snaps so uh it could be a situation where he's trending up to be the main guy or maybe it was just an outlier but what are your thoughts on him in the running back situation yeah Boys, i mean real, I th- quick, real quick i think aaron Rodgers has just been cleared to play as oh well. boy there we go Perfect placing time. those placing those vegas bets because a lot of people saw that uh saw that line and just assumed he was not playing yeah it seemed it seemed fishy right now see if we can get some <laughs> In, uh, in the Packers here at plus six, that would be nice. <laughs> Pete's on the move. Um, as far as Ajayi, I think that it's always it's always tough when there's three running backs in the fold, right? Like even with New England, like now I am like deathly afraid. I, I'm in the semifinals on two teams with Rex Burkhead. And I'm deathly afraid of playing Rex Burkhead just because there's two other guys and he he did not see a, a good percentage of the snaps last week. It's tough when uh, you are like, uh, you know, an Amir Abdullah type back where you're not exactly the touchdown back and you're not exactly the air yards back. And I think that might be the case with Ajayi. So uh, I think he'd be like a good GPP play, but I'm not depending on him for for anything um, like certain. 
this this week or, or upcoming. It's like one of those wait and see approaches to see yeah. if he gets any more of the market share. Yeah, that, that's definitely fair. Definitely wait and see. Um, but he is interesting. I think GPP play if you're you know making a lot of lineups, maybe a percent here or there. Um, yeah, all right, so, it's off the board. I just saw it and I was yeah. going and then it's off the yeah, board. Yeah, I checked it a second ago oh, too. I got it. You got it? Yeah, I got it. Oh, damn. All right. You uh, my bookie. Wow. He was quick, quick on the draw. Yeah, Freeman hasn't been talking for a couple minutes, so that was why. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I should say, adding on to this, uh, JHI has been remarkably efficient uh, with the with the Eagles, and that was the one thing about his his production with the Dolphins. He was just horribly inefficient this year, and now he is almost around seven yards per carry. And granted, it's not on a huge number of rushes per game, but it's at this point uh, forty four attempts, uh, and really each game. Uh, he's been pretty good. So uh, something to, to monitor. If they really decide to feed him, and if he can continue, I mean, obviously, that, that uh, seven yards per carry, that's unsustainable. But if he can continue to produce at an efficient rate, that would be something really intriguing because the Eagles do like to run the ball. That's fair. Um, all right, so let's just spend a couple minutes as well on this Green Bay situation. Freeman, I'm curious your thoughts on – um, what the wide receiver situation is going to look like in Green Bay. You know, like Jordy has always been the guy that you want with Aaron Rodgers, but this year has been, um, you know, Devontae Adams. Like he's one of only a few guys that has over a 30% market share over the last little bit. Like he's clearly the number one wide receiver in Green Bay with Brett Hundley. The question is, is what is it going to look like with Aaron Rodgers back in the fold? I don't know. I, I mean, I think Jordy is – with Rodgers, I think he is still the guy, but Adams is very close to being the, the guy right there with him. I mean, I, I think Cobb is basically out. Um, what's interesting, I mean, if you look at the red zone usage that Jordy Nelson has gotten since last year, uh, it has been just astronomical, specifically within the 10-yard line. And within the 21 games that he has played with Aaron Rodgers, if we discount the game at the beginning of the season, I think it was week two when Jordy played like two snaps and then was out for the rest of the game. If we discount that game, I think Nelson has 20 touchdowns within his last 21 games with Rodgers. And like on the one hand, that seems like a total outlier type of uh, number, but it isn't based on the amount he gets targeted within the 10 yard line. So um, I don't know. I will be really interested. The one thing is all of that production has come with the Packers really not having a running game. And now they have something with a running game with Jonathan Williams. So we haven't seen that with Aaron Rodgers in the last year and a half. So I think that will be the big kind of X factor. How much do they want to rely on their running game? You just made me sad. You made me really sad. You said Jonathan Williams. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> you made me sad because he's like on all of my best ball teams. We were so <laughs> we were so excited about Jonathan Williams being the uh, the bell cow back once Lashawn McCoy went down, and they got rid of him for fat like Tolbert. Do you know where Williams is right now? Can you guys do you guys know where he is? What team? I do not. Come on, Pete, because he used to be on uh, Denver. He was on Denver's practice squad. I he don't went. Know. He went to the Saints. He went to the freaking Saints. Like, how That's do you do that? Like, they need help, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's so tilting. Anyways, uh, I agree. As far as the 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 wide receivers, it's it, I think it's like a bump to them all, really. But the biggest bump because of how terrible he has been is you. It's going to be the um, uh, the one point to the Adam Thielen two point oh. That's Jordy. That's Jordy Nelson. So uh, Jordy, his stock takes a uh, you know a meteoric rise compared to what it was but Jordy's also the, I think the number two now in that offense right like uh, from the beginning of the season I mean we, yeah. we saw that it, it seems like it seems like Adams is the number one there in Green Bay now yeah I wonder what the public thinks about that like Pete Jordy's 63 like 
you know, with uh, people, you know, especially if Rogers is cleared to play and we get like the next couple of days of everyone talking about him writing articles about Aaron Rodgers being back, like you think Jordy's going to be pretty popular just because people want to roster Rodgers and Jordy together? I don't think it'll be that popular. I mean, people will definitely look to that, but I don't think it's like he's going to be mega chalk. I think he's a great play. I mean, Mm -hmm. chemistry is one of those things that sometimes hard to quantify. There's definitely data to back it up. With quarterback receivers and, you know, as time goes on, obviously it gets skewed as, you know, a player gets older. Obviously, Jordy's dealt with a lot of injuries. But um, just from the eye test, I mean, the way that, you know, Rodgers and Jordy are able to connect on those back shoulder throws and sideline throws, clearly that connection wasn't there with Hungry. So I expect some regression for uh, Jordy Nelson, and I do think he's a really good play. I think that game becomes a lot more stackable. That's the big thing to me. With Aaron Rodgers healthy, we could see a shootout there now, and I'm a big fan of game stacks and the correlation there, and I think that makes a ton of sense. Yeah, a lot of options. I think you could go in that game for sure. Um, All right, well, let's get to the part of the show that everyone's waiting for, the skill game propositions. Um, It's time to put some six-packs before his light into play. We're going to offer up some skill game propositions. I think last week uh, worked well where we sort of just run through the positions, uh, let these guys – throw out some props, get, um, you know, some, some action on the guys that they want. I will say that, you know, this exercise uh, is so people can take some stands on some players. You know, it's very easy to run through positions and say, I like these seven guys, but uh, the skill game proposition section uh, mostly is designed to help us, uh, you know, rank these players and how well we like them versus uh, the other good plays. So let's we'll start with the quarterback position. Who has something they want to throw out? I'll take Kamara if he plays for someone. I guess that's a tough prop to make initially. Uh, <laughs> At the quarterback position. <laughs> oh, man. Classic <laughs> Rammy. Oh, oh. Donkey. I'll take uh, Tim Newton. First, the projection, or what else do you have? What else do you think we should do? Uh, I mean, I'm I'm on Cam Newton. You know, like I mentioned him as one of my kind of chalky locks. So uh, yeah, you're going to have to be on- bold for me to be under Cam. Yeah. They've been at 21.1 right now, DraftKings points. So so if, if we set a line of Cam plus two points against Russ, what would you what side would you guys be on? Oh, Russ, all day, every day. Would any would anyone take the Cam points? Give me uh give me right now we have twenty one point one versus twenty three point three. I'll take uh I'll take Cam plus two points day. Okay. Cool. I'll I'll take the plus two points as well. I'll take Russ. On that. Nice, nice, a 2v2. I like it. All right. Getting some volume from Brian. That's good. Love that. I'm getting in early, Pete. <laughs> That's good. Solid. Love that. One other guy that I'm uh, a little interested in this week that I think is a little contrarian is Blake Bortles uh, points. My only concern with Blake Bortles is – Only one concern? <laughs> There's a multitude of concerns. My biggest concern in terms of his ceiling is the game flow. But I do like Bortles a lot in this spot. All right. It's 18.1. You want the over? I'll take the under. Sure. Done. Yeah, give me the under on that, too. Oh, I think a good prop bet is uh, is Pete likes Bortles, and at just 200 more, Freeman likes Mariota. What are their point projections here? Uh, like, you have to scroll way down for Mariota. A, a point and a half. See, I'll do that straight up with you. I actually like Mariota them more than we haven't projected for right now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think I'm giving up too much equity on that, but I mean, <laughs> whatever. I'll, Mariota whatever. versus Bortles, you're giving you're too much Marcus equity. You're Mariota versus Blake Bortles. Like, if I would have told you that at the beginning of the year, you would have been juicing your pants. And Mariota's <laughs> against yeah, the but, Niners. Yeah. yeah, but it's not the beginning of the year. And, like, we have him projected for, you know, where, where he's projected. I think we're probably a little low on him, but whatever. Yeah, I'll do it. Here, I want uh, the under on Brady, which is, like, famous last words. Um, I'll give you the over because you just gave me some equity. I'll do it. Okay. 22 is the line if anyone else wants in on that. I'll take the over as well. Okay. Angry Brady narrative. Yeah. It's, Coming off a loss. Yeah. Smash City, baby. Getting Gronk back I think is going to be pretty big too. He's pretty good. Yeah. Not bad. Getting okay. Hogan back too was good was good for him last last week as well. So Hogan and Gronk should be okay for this upcoming week. 
Um, yeah. I'll I'll take the under on Jimmy Garoppolo this week if anybody wants that. And he's I feel like Labs has him projected kind of low, but I'll um mm-hmm. I'll still take the under. Take the under. It's at eighteen point eight, I think. Uh, let's see. We have eighteen point six. I'll take the over there. I'll, I'll give you over too. Just give yeah. me some action. I knew I could find some suckers on that one. Yeah, you got us. <laughs> you got us. Um, <laughs> what are you guys' thoughts? Exact same projection. Aaron Rodgers, Ben Roethlisberger, almost exact same price, almost exact same projection. Oh man, we're we're gonna have to look more at that Rodgers projection, but um. Yeah, I mean, it, it just popped into the model, so we're, we're we're working with it. But it's a good good chance to like fit Rodgers into like our conversation of quarterbacks. Like he's six eight, so he's the third highest priced guy. Like, where would you guys put him in that? Um, you know, like Russell is obviously more expensive, but then we have like Breeze and Roethlisberger and Cam right below him. I think I'd go Roethlisberger. Uh, you know, I think Roethlisberger has a better matchup. Uh, Rodgers just coming off of the injury issue going against a Carolina defense that is pretty good against the pass, uh, I think I'd go with Roethlisberger. Pete, would you have Roethlisberger over Rodgers? I'll take Rod. Uh, <laughs> it's tough, right? I'd say Rodgers for sure. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, Rodgers coming off the injury. I'll take Roethlisberger, actually. Yeah, I'll take Roethlisberger as well. At home to Roethlisberger has been so good. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Um... Okay, any last quarterback ones before we get to uh, all of the action Pete wants on Kamara? All right, Pete, go for it. Yeah, I want Kamara versus basically everyone other than Le'Veon Bell. <laughs> I do Kamara versus Le'Veon Bell if I get a lot of points, whatever the projection is. It would be five points. All right, so um, I'll, I'll give you 300 bucks and go girly straight up over Kamara this week. Kamara. Kamara, yeah, I would say Kamara, and I've gotten correct on that. I know it's like the it's, it's the Mariota and Kamara, and we always say it backwards. Mm. But yeah, I'll go uh, Gurley over straight up Kamara if, if if you think he's the the smash spot other than Love Bell. Obviously, if Kamara misses, the it's a void because sure. normally, I mean, he said he's going to play. It's a sure, player. Yeah, play. yeah, yeah, void. Yeah, sure. All right, but if yeah, he I mean, that's, if that's he that's plays a, a snap. Path. If What's he plays his snap, it counts. Like if he starts the game, it counts. Yeah, if he plays yeah. any snap, yeah. it's good. Yeah. If he comes yeah. out afterwards, like I mean, it's a concussion. It's not like something else. Sure, yeah. I'll give up some equity and go Kamara versus Gurley, even though I think Gurley's a safer play, uh, especially in terms of median projection. Yeah, I um, yeah, I lost, I lost a bet to Silva and uh, Sammy Reed last week, and I was on Mike Davis. And I was really tilted because he had that long run mm-hmm. or long pass where there's a legal man downfield. And then he got knocked out, and I feel like he could have came back in, but whatever. Um, I think it was Friedman that mentioned him earlier. But I would agree with, like, most sites having him as the highest points per dollar running back if anybody wanted anybody over him. Or maybe I could give you uh, – no, I'm not going to give anyone two options. But if anyone wanted, like, a higher – price per dollar over him i would take it i would take mike davis like a higher so you, price per do- like higher plus yeah minus so, or something. You, so you got collins drake yeah. p ryan uh those guys hmm. geo yeah, 12.2 well yeah we've never done a plus minus prop i like it though you gotta think value wise so it's like a cash game i mean i'm on i'm on mike davis how many points do you want versus Drake, uh, Dave? Uh, I mean, I'm pretty high on Drake. It's 4.4 right now, so I, it would take like five points for Drake. But that, but if you had, but if you had that, that would like put him in the same conversation as points per dollar. Let's do it. It's easier to quantify on the. Uh, I mean, I guess we can go through the plus minus, but it's easier to quantify with just a straight difference in projection. Yeah. We'll do five. Oh, five points. Yeah. Okay. I'll You're take the guess. So you, we just have to do whatever you say. So you should just clean up here, Dave. Nice. Give it give it to me. Dave, so you were high on McKinnon. I'll give you the uh, after either of you guys, by the way, if you want in on that. Dave Dave gets the guest bump with uh, the extra half point uh, half point there. But if you guys want it, uh, I'll do Drake minus four and a half points versus uh 
Mike Davis. Nah, I'm no, good. I'm good. But I, I want to rewind just for a second. Uh, and Pete, so you want uh, Camara? I will take. Let me see. Can I take just like a number of backs, like get some volume, and just go further down this this deficit that I'm in? Sure, take some volume. I mean, I don't want to go against like. Uh, Gur- you said I mean, anyone Gur- but Le'Veon. Sure, I guess I have to go against Gurley, even though I'm giving up a point and a half. Just go ahead. Yeah, but I mean, your guy has a higher salary. Yeah. Go ahead, buddy. Go ahead. Fire off some names. <laughs> okay, I'm going. I'm going with Gurley. I'll go with Ingram. Um, I'll go with McCoy. <laughs> I'll go. I'll go uh, with Fournette. All right, four of them up right there. Interesting. Um, Dave, you, you said that you really liked uh, Jarek McKinnon. I'll take uh, P. Ryan against him. Exact same price. Well, yeah, I would take P. Ryan against him too. It's a GPP play. Like, <laughs> I would t- like P. Ryan uh, – people probably forget uh, that there's like literally no one else other than P- – he's like last man standing there in Washington right now. Yeah. He's yeah, going to be he- very chalky, but yes. Yeah. I've not that gets, much, yeah. much of a fish. Give me, give me, you got to give me something. Well, and on the topic there of P. Ryan, Washington's fill-in number two running back is now on IR. So that's what really, I'm saying. Yeah, he's yeah. the last man standing. Yeah, really, he is was the last Byron, guy. Uh, Byron Marshall. He was the uh, yeah. the Oregon goat. Remember Pete with um, uh, uh, D'Anthony Thomas. It's the other of course. guy. Oh, of course. and 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 Mariota. What a what a trio that was. And finally, back at home is a home favorite. So it seems like. P. Ryan's in a really nice spot. Yeah, that's that's fair. I thought I was thought I was going to get you on that one on your McKinnon love, but uh, you yeah. were, you're too sharp for me. Nice um, try, Brian. You want to do two points? Sure. All right. Why not? <laughs> I gotta. I mean, I gotta withhold the fish status that I already have. So why not? Any other running back props you guys want? Team moving. All right. Let's go to wide receivers then. What are you guys' thoughts? Throw out some props. Um, I like Michael Thomas more than most probably this week. Okay. Right, he's he's at seventeen. Like he's at seventeen point three. I mean, I I like him too, but I'll I'll give you some action. I'll take the under. All right. Yeah, I'll take the under as well. Perfect. I'll also I'll also go. Uh, I mentioned Doug Baldwin, so I'll go him over Funchess. There's a it's a hundred dollar difference. If you guys want Funchess, I feel like that's a pretty generous one. Yeah, that's that's is generous. I would mm. take that. I don't know that it's that generous. I'll take. Uh, I like it. I love you, Dave, but I don't know about that. I mean, Webster's out now. Yeah, we have Funchess sixteen point three versus fifteen point eight. I guess it's generous. I'll take Funches. I'll take Funches. Sorry, Dave. I, I, I would. Uh, yeah, Funches just so clear the wide receiver one in Green Bay or in, in, against Green Bay, whereas Baldwin has been a little up and down as far as his targets go. I like the Baldwin call a lot though this week. Soccer, Dave. Sean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's solid. Um, keep on going, guys. Let's. So I'm interested in your thoughts on DeAndre Hopkins um, going I'll against that. You want the under? Yeah, going against Jacksonville, a super tough matchup. Um, But, uh, yeah, I mean, that target volume. I don't know if I have a side on this either way. Um, But, Pete, if you want the under, I'll I'll take the over. I think the under is probably the sharp side. I'll take the under for sure. I mean, Yates throwing in the ball, too, I think hurts a little bit. But Yeah. Hopkins is good. I mean, Patrick Peterson talked about it. He's the toughest cover. Uh, He's on the field every snap. I mean, I, I freaking love Hopkins. He's just such a stud. But yeah, very, very we, tough matchup. That's probably the best. Uh, I mean, Peterson versus him was very interesting. But Ramsey and, and Hopkins, that's going to be uh, like football. It's going to be a good matchup to watch. Yeah. Um, we need a Green Bay wide receiver prop. Something. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Something there. Yeah, you're right. So right now we have Jordy Nelson at 14.7. And Devonte Adams at fourteen point two, so pretty comparable. Uh, do either of you guys have a side you want to take? I would take Adams over Nelson. Adams, yeah. I don't. I'm not. I'm not quite a, as on board with with Nelson. I'll I take mean, Nelson against both of you guys if you want. Sure. 
Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I think I think Jordy's like a fairly easy fade this week, but I don't know. I don't know about that. He's a fairly easy fade. I know. I just, I think he's going to be more popular than what you were saying earlier. I don't you know. think? I mean, I th- I think it's possible, but given but how like horrible he's, he's been, day. like look, the thing is, yeah. like price, like that's why I don't think he's going to be that popular. I mean, yeah, but people are going to be like, he's like supposed to be 8k with Rogers. Like people are just going to remember the good old days with him and Rogers and think that his struggles have just been because of Hunley, you know? All right. So this is this, in addition to the prop that we just did, this is another prop. What do you think his ownership will be? Brian, what do you think his ownership will be? Um, I would guess double digits. Okay, um, like 10 or closer to like 15? 12%. 12? Cash or GPPs? GPPs. Yeah, I, I would say probably under 12%. Yeah, I'm going to take the under there. Pete, you want to take the under? Sure, I'll take the under for sure. Yeah, I could be wrong. Well, if you're right, then you just – Boned yeah. all of us. Hey, Brian. Yeah. You're wrong. But I, I believe it, honestly, at this point. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I book a bet against myself? Um, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, was, uh, that, uh, was that Super Troopers? <laughs> I just lost a bet to myself. Right, right. Got a lot Farva. Oh man. Um, let's see here. Any other last wide receiver ones we want to do here? Yeah, we have Antonio for 21.2. Uh, I'm curious as to what your thoughts are. If anyone wants to take the over or the under on him. No thoughts there. I'll take the over if you want to like, get I'll give you whatever action you want, Friedman. Uh, Brian, you said you want the over? Yeah, I'll take the over. All right, I'll take the under. He's been really good lately. Why yeah. Not? Yeah, he's, he's like the best wide receiver of all time, basically behind Jerry Rice. So, yeah, yeah Don't probably take it wrong. Yeah. Uh, not, I'm not really looking for a prop here, but just curious your thoughts. Um, what are your guys' thoughts on Josh Gordon? I'll, I'll take, take the, the over. We, we have him at 14.3. I'll take the over. I'll take the over, too. Yeah, I don't think we've talked about him. You know, obviously he got the price bump from five five. He's six eight um, this week, but you know, if we think the Baltimore defense is not quite as good as without Jimmy Smith, like maybe an interesting spot here for him again. I also like that Corey Coleman's on the other side. I don't think you can mm-hmm. just heavily favor Josh Gordon and just take him away. Um, obviously Kaiser, like we talked about, isn't you know he's not going to be efficient. He's not going to you know play unbelievable football for the whole game, but he shows flashes. And he had a couple good passes to Gordon. Yeah. And, and the nice thing too, is he's so athletic. He can buy a time. So I think that he's, uh, you know, I think the situation for Gordon, you know, historically or not historically, but this year you haven't really wanted to take anyone versus the Ravens. We saw last week that this defense is uh, not quite the same without Jimmy Smith. And uh, I like, I like Cleveland at home here, even with a 16 point total. I'll, I like Josh Gordon. Yeah, I like it. He's uh, gotten in – I mean, it's only a two-game sample, so you have to take it, uh, you know, in a, in a sort of tentative manner. But uh, an inordinately high market share of the air yards. He is just getting targeted uh, consistently and deep, like high high mm-hmm. equity targets. So I, I like it. That's fair. All right, run out of time here, so let's quickly go through tight end and defense. Uh, start with tight end. Who wants to throw out a prop? I guess we can start with like the Gronk or Ertz sort of thing. Well, I mean, I think Gronk clearly over Ertz, but uh, I'll I'll take the over on the Ertz. We have him at twelve point seven. If anyone wants the under, mm. I'll give it to you if you want the action, Friedman. I'm on, uh, you, you you're I'm I'm letting, letting you load up on the volume, whatever you want. Thanks, Pete. You're in. Uh, give me the over on Eric Ebron if you guys want that. He's at eight point three right now. I'll I'll take the under, but Ebron has been he's been very good, like relative to his salary recently, been very good. Well, he's starting to see tar- targets yeah. as well. Yeah, 
rush last game I, and just ran a little bad not to get in the end zone. I, I like you run a lot. Yeah. He's in that Saturday game, that first Saturday game, right? I, yeah. want, I want the over, Friedman, if you'll give it to me. Sure. Perfect. I mean, tight end's kind of gross this week, right? Like, other than other than Gronk, like, it's uh, – I don't know. I'm telling you. Yeah, I will take the under on Olsen all day, every day. Because you said if he's reasonably healthy, which is just not even a thing right now with Greg Olson. Yeah, I would take the under. I'll take the over. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kyle Rudolph. Sorry, How can you fade that? Bud? Nah, Kyle Rudolph. I like the over on him as well. We talked about it earlier. Cincinnati not great against tight ends. He's at ten point eight right now. Yeah. So he, I'll take he the under. Yeah, he would need. He would need either a lot of targets or. You're taking the under too. No, Brian? I'm taking. The, I'm, I'm on. I'm on your side. Cool. Yeah, I'll take the under. Uh, I'm interested in the. Actually, no, not really. I was going to say the over for Jimmy Graham. I mean, I could see him getting into the into the end zone and still not breaking 12 points. Uh, tight, so, tight end is tough this week. Yeah. It really is. Um, all right, any last tight ends before we can move to defense? No. Yeah. Pete, what are your thoughts on defense? Uh, you know, we talked about some of these teams. You know, Baltimore uh, is the top of our DraftKings, some of our pro models here. Uh, obviously, that's – you know, we have to factor in the injuries here, but they are facing Cleveland. Uh, what are your thoughts on some of these high-end ones here? You know, we have Jacksonville, top one. Um, are you going to pay up for a defense this week, it seems? I love Minnesota's defense this week going against Cincinnati uh, and that offensive line. We saw Dalton play so bad last week. A.J. Green play poorly. Matt home, Minnesota's been incredible. I think they have a great defensive matchup against this Bengals offense. I like him at 3,500, especially at the discount that you're getting relative to those other defenses. In terms of raw projection, I mean, I think it'd be hard to take anyone outside of Jacksonville, but give me, give me the Vikings. I like them quite a bit. I would take them straight up versus Baltimore if someone wants them. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I think New, New Orleans is going to be right up there as well. Um, oh, yeah. I would I rate – if I did a raw projection, I'd say Jacksonville – New Orleans, Minnesota, and then you get to guys like Baltimore. You know, you're including all the games. I think Denver defense is interesting. Um, mm-hmm. Billy defense is interesting. Yeah, Even the Billy Ravens this week is interesting, too. It's kind of a sneaky one, I think. Who's yeah, that? Want, the, Redskins? the Redskins, if you want a short Gabbert. Yeah, yeah. I definitely like the Washington Reds. I also like Tennessee's defense, honestly, on the road. I'm just so – Let's do it. Let's do a homer prop. Let's do – I got the Broncos. You got the, the Tennessee Titans there, Dave. Come on. Okay. Uh, Let's do it, bud. Okay, fine. Sure. Perfect. Yeah. Tracking scoring. All right, that's a good one. Well, uh, you want to get some equity back. What do you want, Dave? Who do you want to take here? Um, I will take – I don't know. I, honestly, I, I don't know. With defense, it's just like throw a dart at it. This guy la- more than defense, huh? Oh, man. Like this guy last week sent me a message. He's like, hey, thanks. I just won 50K on FanDuel. And I looked at it. And it, was a, it was a 2v2 that was like the same. But he had 35 points with kicker and defense, and I had two. It's just <laughs> like such a shot in the dark, man. <laughs> it had to be Boswell, right? Oh uh, no! It was Denver uh, because Boswell was a Sunday night game. It was um, oh, it was nice it was play, Denver yeah. defense, and then uh, I forget he, I oh, it was Butker. Butker and Denver defense. That was the Stones. Yeah, Butker was just it's a shame. Feels so good. Hmm. Maybe we need to, uh, Freeman. We need to start bringing back the the kicker analysis to the pod. No, this is what the people want. Apparently, it's uh, it's too early. Uh, in the it's week, I, I might mention Cairo oh. Santos. I thought you meant too early in the season. Yeah, we still got a couple weeks till we get two kickers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saved my kicker hot takes for the playoffs. Yeah, that's fair. All right, any last any last props you guys want to get in? No, oh, fun. we got we got Dave the Legend on the pod, which is which is awesome. Dave, any uh, any final words from you, man? How's corporate life? Oh, corporate life is great. Um, I put a hole in the wall the other uh, the other week playing ping pong. So you know, just it's uh, it's fun. It's it's what you would think a fantasy corporate job would be like. So uh, I'm loving it. Just had a third 
uh, a third little girl, so I'm going into the office a lot more these days. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'll be back in 18 years. All right. Any any advice for the listeners out there? Three yeah. girls. What's the key? What's the key to being a good dad and keeping? Oh, family it's uh, it's like dance moves, man. Like dance parties. Like all, all my friends with like boys, like yeah, I just played catch. Like ah, oh, I just had a nice dance party. Like <laughs> it's just being able to tap into uh, you know, to your sensitive side, to your your feminine side, and. You're a good uh, dancer. Too. Yeah, That's- yeah, yeah. I'm good at that. It's like <laughs> I've got so much uh, femininity that uh, it just makes me like a great girl dad. So, um, yeah. That that's a, that's a secret right there, and uh, just just loving those girls as much as you can. Awesome. Okay. We are going to end it there. Thank you, Dave, for coming on. Uh, you can find him on Twitter at Soccer Dave, which is S O C R Dave. Thanks for coming on, Dave. Uh, Good luck this week, guys. I hope to see Fancy Labs, guys, at the top of the leaderboard, and we will talk to you again next week for week 16.